Welcome, greetings, glad you're here. Today, we talk about one topic. We bring in one discussion that we wish didn't exist in the world. Yeah, today we talk about the parent wound. When the damage hits, I illustrate with this, there is no such thing if you look at history and, and count over the, the timelines of the centuries, the decades, there is no un... Every war is completely unprecedented in that each war brings an unparalleled amount of never-before-seen machines of destruction. I mean, the massive cannon power of the previous ages, the introduction at the American Civil War of the automatic weaponry and the destruction and the numbers of dead that, that it introduced, all the way down to the machinery unleashed in the battlefield of the Great War, World War I. For example, during World War I, a battery of mobile 75 millimeter machine guns, the French Army's pride and joy, could, for example, sweep 10 acres of terrain 435 yards deep in less than 50 seconds. In less than a minute, that much area would just be obliterated by machine guns. On one instance in the First World War, in five days, 432,000 shells were fired on the September engagement of the Marne. Shrapnel from mortars, grenades, artillery, projectiles, bombshells would all account for 60% of the 9.7 million military deaths in World War I. Tremendous amount of carnage brought on by grenades and bombs and artillery shells and, and gases and just the, the unleashing of, of all things war. But interestingly enough, when they would be clearing battlefields and they'd come to the clearing stations, there were those who had been exposed to exploding shells. Although clearly not damaged visibly, they had no visible wounds, but they appeared to be suffering from a remarkable state of shock caused by the force of the blast that they had been exposed to. This new type of injury reported by the British Medical Journal report would conclude to be the result of the actual explosion itself and not the missile set in motion by it. To where by 1915, at the close of the war, the British termed it shell shock. The tragedy of war left people shell shocked. Today, it bears another name, PTSD, post traumatic stress disorder. Well, every growing war was greater than the one before it and the damage of the battlefields would bear the shell shock, the PTSD. Some stagger through life not wounded in a war, not from the explosions of the battlefield, but wounded and damaged from life in none other than their own home. They bear the parent wound. They stagger with the effects, the wounds, though often invisible, that leave them hurting and reeling. It's been popularized and broken down specifically the parent wound to the mother wound and the father wound. But these parent wounds and the trauma that they cause often leave people to grow up as wounded adults who migrate into dysfunctional, dysfunctional 
coping mechanisms of one sort or another, struggling to just survive the explosions, the wounds, the shell shock of what their parents created where they grew up. Many are trying to make life work and they, they stagger along because of the critical, the negative, even the abusive character of their parents. Their future relationships are hindered. They, they demonstrate lack of love. They show low self-confidence. Their, their damaged self-worth and the pain associated with that grows their inner critic. And somewhere along the journey, they begin to accept that, well, it was their fault. Their, their young mind trapped these things in and, and they blame themselves. They, they, they run the gamut from anxiety to low mood and depression, often find their way in simply because of the parent wound. Talking to a lot of people who were wounded they go through life staggering and damaged and shell-shocked because of their own parents, their, their critical mother, their absentee father, their, their, their overly judgmental, their abusive, whatever it was, they're wounded and they act out those wounds, some by trying to be too rigid in their own life and relationships. Others swing the opposite way and they're, they're too loose with boundaries and they think they have to open up and please everyone. And others just shut down and become relationally unavailable or closed off. Tragically wounded and feeling bad and the pattern, sadly, gets duplicated. It gets repeated. That which hurt them the most, they go and do to the next generation. Many are struggling through life simply wounded. So what do you do if you had an anger-inducing, hate-filled upbringing, a lack of protection, that unacceptance, that comparison, that favoritism? If you grew up with these wounds, how do you handle it? Many today are living in blame and wrath. The world says, avoid them, Love yourself and do what makes you happy. Oddly enough, what the world says, avoid and love yourself and do what makes you happy, isn't that what somebody was doing who caused you the wound in the first place? Think about that. How do we accept and then overcome this parent wound? What do we do? Let's get some wisdom from God's word in a sound grip on the truth that will lead us into tremendous victory. I begin with Bible guide point number one, and that is found in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 7 and verse number 11. There's insight in Matthew 7, 11. Yeah, I know, a quick stop off at the 7, 11 to kick off the sermon. Okay. But there's insight in Matthew 7, 11 that will set us free and begin our journey to total victory over the parent wound. Now, I don't say total victory over the parent wound glibly or lightly, like your wounds aren't real, the impact isn't severe, the damage isn't long-lasting. No, I say it because of the confidence, the absolute confidence that I hold for the Word of God. Listen to Matthew chapter 7, verse 11. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more, how much more shall your heavenly, shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good gifts to them that ask him? Now, catch this from our text. We see two definitive and absolute things of every person evil and good gifts, evil and good gifts. Everyone is a combination of the two, evil and good gifts. We are all evil. Romans chapter three, we've all sinned. We've all come short of the glory of almighty God. 
the very law of God, the Old Testament written, the books of the law, the books that Moses received in his day, our schoolmaster, our master teacher. The law of God is our schoolmaster, our master teacher, to show us that we are all under sin, and as under sin, we need a Savior to pick us up out of sin. We're all sinners who need Jesus. There are no perfect people. I'm a sinner just like the person who hurt me the most is a sinner. Now, the key here is that you and I choose to become a sinner who is saved by God's grace. Call upon the name of the Lord and be saved. So we establish, we know they hurt me, the evil, the pain that I feel and have languished in my life because of their evil. Evil is painful. And as the victims of evil, we know it's hurt. But you are evil. Those who hurt you are evil, okay? But the second part there is good gifts. We are all evil and good gifts. There is evil and we hurt from the evil, but there are also good gifts. Now in the evil, we tend not to see because we're feeling the pain of the evil and all we see is the evil. But the truth is, even in the midst of the evil, there are also good gifts. This is a Bible fact, a truth statement spoken by Jesus Christ, that you are evil and good gifts. Now, don't let your hurt and your emotions blind you to this truth. That while there is evil there, there are also good gifts there as well. Every single person is a combination of evil and good gifts. You say, well, I hear you, Matt. I hear you, but the bad outweighs the good. You know, that, that scale. When Daniel was called in for the son of Nebuchadnezzar to read the writing and give the interpretation thereof, and, 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 and he said, look, here's what it is. You're a lousy king. And you've been weighed in the balances, and boom, you are found wanting. In other words, bro, you're bad way, way, way outweighs your good. And some of you are smiling right now going, yeah, he understands that was what it was like with my mother. That's how my aunt treated me. That's what it was like with my father. And the bad outweighed the good. But the Bible fact is, everybody is a combination of evil and good gifts. The nicest grandmother, evil and good gifts. The meanest, most aggressive man, evil and good gifts. You and me, evil and good gifts. Bible fact number two. I pull your attentions to Romans 12 and verse 21. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Evil overcomes or good overcomes, which one? Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Everyone is a combination of evil and good gifts. Matthew 7, 11 showed us that everyone is a combination of evil and good gifts. Romans 12, 21 says, don't let the evil be the overcomer, but use good to overcome the evil. And so I can either let the hurt and the pain and the evil have dominance in my life, and many who are staggering through life wounded, many who are shell-shocked with the parent wound, are staggering through life, and they're bitter, they're angry, they're self-destructive and others destructive because somebody hurt them and hurt them severely. And so what you have there is evil 
producing more evil and, and like a filthy, corrupted, dirty, polluted river, it keeps flowing its destruction on down the line. And so that's the person who's letting evil overcome. Or, as the scripture says, be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. And, and so I overcome the evil with the good. I take away the dominance of the hurt. I take away the bigness of the pain. And I overcome evil with good. I must overcome evil with good by focusing on the good gifts. Focusing on the good gifts. Now, Matthew 7 tells me that we're all evil and good gifts. The nicest, sweetest person that you know, the kindest, gentlest person you worship with, the most beloved family member you have, evil and good gifts. The most villainous person, the one who's wounded you the most, the one who's destroyed you the worst, the one who tore you apart, evil and good gifts. Everyone is evil and good gifts. But we understand from Romans 12, 21, which one overcomes, evil or good? Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Now for the big escape. If you really want to take this parent wound, if you want to take this close family connection that has wounded you, the evil done against you is done overcoming you. It's done destroying you. It's done hurting you. Here is how, from the word of God, we overcome evil with good. Philippians 4 and verse 8. Philippians 4 and verse 8 says, Finally, brethren... Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report. If there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Literally, Philippians 4, 8 says, think about the good things. You want to overcome evil with good, think about the good. Quit thinking about the evil. Now, the best way to quit thinking about the evil is forgive the evil. In other words, turn it over to God to bring justice in my life. You'll notice he says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are just, God will bring justice into my life. It was not just what those people did that hurt you. It was not just the way your mother treated you. It was not just the way your father treated you. You watched how other siblings were treated and how you were treated. You watched how other cousins were looked at and how grandma looked at you. You've been wounded by their injustice, but you have to know that God will bring justice into your life. Hey, God will bring true, pure justice to me no matter what level of abuse I have endured. God will bring true justice to me no matter what level of abuse I have endured. I want to turn over to God the outcomes. God, you will bring what's just. You will bring what's pure. You will bring what's lovely. You will bring what's good. When I trust God for outcomes, I mean, think back to Genesis where Joseph was. And his brothers, in a rage of jealousy and anger, took him and sold him into slavery while he cried and screamed for mercy from them. With bitter greed, they sold him into slavery. Cruel and mean. And when Joseph said, many years on, you meant evil, might we remember Many people mean evil against you. There's a lot of people who don't wish you well. There's those who chose to be evil towards you. But he said, you meant evil, but he knew God would do something good. 
and he would save the world from a terrible famine and keep a lot of people alive. And so Joseph looked at it and understood what you and I need to understand right now is that God is greater than my detractors. God is greater than my detractors, even if they're my own parents. Turn over to God the outcomes. Turn over to God the outcomes. They gave everything to him or her. She got all the attention. She got all the love. I got all the abuse. Turn it over to God. Let God take care of it. Trust God to bring justice in your life. I'm going to think about what's just in that God is the justifier. I'm going to focus on the good. Philippians 4, 8. Think on these things. Whatsoever things are good. Whatsoever things are lovely. Good reports. We know. We've already established. We've already talked about it. Matthew 7, 11, That everyone is a collection of evil and good gifts. We know everybody is a collection of evil and good gifts. He said, well, they were pretty evil. Okay. But remember, there were also good gifts there. They didn't murder you. You didn't die from an abusive rage. They fed you somewhere along the way. You say, they never did anything. I was conceived and then they were gone. Hey, pause a minute there. Sometimes there's a blessing in that. Sometimes that's a blessing too. God might have kept them away from you to save you from their evil snares. Had they been there, you might have learned their evil ways and you might be a whole lot worse off than you are right now. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Focus on the good. Focus on the good. No matter how cruel, no matter how mean, no matter how dysfunctional, the home was that you grew up in, no matter how deep your parent wounds are, somehow you're here hearing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Think about that for a minute. In their evil and messed up life, God managed to slide you through all of that mess all the way to the saving arms of Jesus Christ. So focus on the good. Truth is, when we dwell on evil and we do not focus on the good, when we choose to dwell on the evil and we don't focus on the good, then that's all we see. But when we seek out the good, we find it. Jesus said, seek and ye shall find. The truth of the matter is this. Most people, now hear what I say right now because this is very important. Most people Bearing a parent wound, people with the mother wound, people with the father wound, people whose grandma, whose aunt, whose uncle, somebody close in the family wounded you. Most people are not seeking out the good and Jesus promised, seek and ye shall find. They're not seeking out the good because they're overcome of the evil. Hey, we do become... What we think about, this is a fact. Seek and ye shall find. I'm going to think about the good things. I'm going to think about the pure things. I'm going to think about the lovely things. I'm going to think about the just things. And I'm going to overcome the evil with the good. I become what I think about. That's why God in his word says, Matt, think on these things. Don't think about how you were wounded. Don't think about how you were hurt. Don't think about how your needs weren't met. Don't think about how you were made to feel less than. Don't think about how you felt insecure. Don't think about the fact other people got taken care of and you got neglected. Don't think about that. Think on the lovely things, the pure things, and the good things, and overcome the evil with good. But the devil wants you thinking about the evil. So when I begin... To as Philippians 4, 8 says, turn the outcomes over to God. God will bring justice in my life. Obviously, my detractors and my wounders and my abusers will not bring justice in my life. So I turn them over to God. God's going to bring justice in my life. And I'm thinking about the good. 
I'm not overcome by evil, but I'm overcoming evil with good. Then, and this is so huge, do good. Matthew 7, 11, if ye then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children. How's my evil and how's my good gifts? The truth is that we're all a collection of evil and good gifts. And the person who hurt us the most was disproportionately evil and slightly skinny on the good gift side of things. And we want to dwell on the good gifts and not duplicate the evil. So we're going to overcome evil with good. But in our own life, how are we doing on the scale of evil and good gifts? You know, I, I think about it like this. When, when your parent wound hits you the hardest and you feel abandoned, why don't you think about that for a second and go, you know, I feel abandoned. I wonder who there is who feels abandoned right now. I should reach out to them. When your parent wound hits you and you feel worthless or of low worth, why don't you say, who is there else who's feeling of little worth right now who I could make them feel worthy by loving them in Jesus' name? That moment I'm reaching out and loving, I'm overcoming evil with good. You had a parent that didn't care about you? I'm sorry for that overcome evil with good, who is there who you could care about today and reach out to them and say, hey, in the name of Jesus Christ, I love you and I care about you. I want to invest in your life. Hey, nobody took care of me. Nobody cared about me. Nobody dreamed about me. Nobody visioned for my life. That wound is there. The hurt is there. But rather than walk through life shell-shocked, overcome of evil, I'm going to realize that, wait a minute, Every person is a collection of evil and good gifts. I'm not going to be overcome of evil. I want to overcome the evil in my life with good. I want to do good gifts for people, and I'm going to help somebody and be there for them. So how full of good gifts am I? How many good gifts am I pouring out for others around me? How am I loving and helping and encouraging people? I mean, when I feel like nobody cares for me and I know my parents didn't care for me and my grandparents didn't care for me and my greater family didn't care for me and my siblings didn't care for me, then I go, wait a minute, Jesus cares for me and there's nobody Jesus doesn't care for. Maybe I'll take a gospel card and hand it to somebody out pumping gas and say, here's a gift for you because Jesus cares for you. Why? Because I know when nobody cares for me, the Lord himself cares cares for me. But we go back to where we began, Matthew 7, 11. If ye then being evil know how to give good gifts, we're a collection of evil and good gifts. How much more will your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? You see, in the power of the Holy Spirit, I can overcome the shell shock of how I was treated in my life. I can overcome the shell shock of my wounds. The PTSD of how I was raised can all disappear in the power of the Holy Spirit of God. In the power of the Holy Spirit of God, I can say, God, I'm letting you bring justice into my life. Hey, unfair, whatever, but God is making something amazing, just like Joseph saving a lot of people alive. In the power of the Spirit, I can focus on good while they were overly terrible, I can focus on the good, and that's where my focus will be, is on the good. And then I go, how can I become like Jesus and go about doing good? I think about a fellow I knew years ago, beautiful saint of God. This fellow never missed church, loved church, was always happy to be there. He would always have, and he'd shake your hand, but he'd give you a piece of chocolate candy. So rather than just shake people's hands and say, good to see you at church, he'd shake your hand and give you a piece of candy. And, I, and he always had them. Every single Sunday he was there passing out candy, had candy in his hand. People come up to see him, kids come up to see him, give him candy. He had become a professional cook after the military and then had gone there from being a cook to being commercially trained and was a full-blown chef, was a master restaurant chef and had cooked for years and 
He'd come to salvation in Christ and he remembered his own life. That he grew up very poor. His daddy had been a drunk. Beat his mom, beat the kids and eventually left them. He grew up with nothing. And he used to think about it and made his way through life. So when he came to Jesus, he had something he decided. Nobody ought to live like I lived. Because when I was a kid, nobody ever bought us or gave us any candy. And so every single week, he had those candies and he'd pass them out. You see, there's somebody looking at life going, God, you'll bring justice in the person of Christ. God, there's been a lot of evil in my life, but I'm going to overcome the evil with the good. In the Holy Spirit, what good can I do to overcome the evil with? What are the good gifts I should be doing? Loving somebody, helping somebody, sharing the gospel. Because remember, just like the one that hurt you the most, you too are a collection of evil and good gifts. Only in the power of the Holy Spirit of God do we overcome the evil with good and watch our good gifts grow and the evil quiet smaller and smaller down. May we in the power of the Spirit of God overcome evil with good in Jesus' victorious name. Thanks for watching. God bless you.